I'm going to give a brief demonstration on how to uh, do some climate analysis in RStudio and also how the ESD package works. So here's the scripts uh, that I'm going to use. So um, first we need to activate uh, the ESD package. Um, so I'm just clicking on this and then I press run to sort of to uh, go through the script and, and carry out each instruction here. So first I want to, after I have activated the ESD package, then I can use this function called retrieve station, which reads uh, station data from an etcdf file, which is uh, stored in this area here. And this contains the, team, uh, the daily maximum temperature in, uh, and also uh, picked the Maput observation. And just to make sure that I'm actually looking at the right data, I'm going to plot the data to see what it looks like. So here is a time series, uh, and here's a map showing that this is where Maputo is, and this is a T maximum, and it ranges between, say, 15 to 45. So that looks fairly reasonable to me. Uh, and now we want to extract some information about the, from this data. So basically, we want to uh, say something about how often we get uh, uh, more than 30 degrees uh, in this data. So one way of doing it is actually uh, we're just looking at uh, um, uh, one season here, so it's December, January and February. And then we estimate the mean of that season, so that's uh, mu, and also we estimate the standard deviation of that season, that's sigma. And then we uh, we want to make a histogram uh, from 15 uh, degrees to 45 degrees with one step in between. So then we make this histogram here. So this is here you can see basically that uh, you get you tend to get more uh, 30 degrees in that in this season than uh, any other temperatures each uh, day. So this is maximum temperature. <clears throat> and then we can add a grid here, so uh, we can sort of uh, see the values here. Now, we want to see if we can estimate these, these statistics through a simpler method, or like simple means, using a, a uh, normal distribution. So then we, uh, we put the uh, curve showing the normal distribution on top of the data here, and it has the same mean value as the uh, original data, and also the standard deviation estimated from this data. And we can see that it's not, it's not perfect, so it's not quite the same, but um, here we use this to approximate the, t the data, and it's much quicker and simpler to use this kind of formula than to work with a lot of data here. So if we want to see how many of the days, uh, how often we get more than 30 degrees here, uh, and that is the same as the area under this curve here, we can print, uh, we can show, uh, uh, count the number of, of days with more than 30 degrees, which is 1973. But we can also estimate that from this curve here. So that's, uh, and it gives a bit slightly higher in, uh, for, with this curve because it's not quite exactly the same here. Now, climate can be described as weather statistics or uh, the statistics of the temperature. And if we can use the normal distribution, there are two parameters which describe this curve, and that is the mean and the standard deviation. So if, if we have one degree uh, increase uh, on, the, on the mean, then we see that the mean increases by one degree here, then the whole curve will sh shift to the right here to higher, higher numbers. And then, of course, we'll, that would also imply that we get uh, more days above 30 degrees. Another way that it could ch change would be that uh, the standard deviation increases or decreases, so basically the spread increases, so it's, it's more var variable. Um, and this is the green curve here sh that shows that you have a you sort of spread out and you get more high and small numbers. And again, if, if you estimate uh, the, uh, um, how that would affect the number of days above 30 degrees, you also get an increase here. So that is a, that is a simple uh, way of uh, estimating the uh, the temperature. Um, if we look at the um, uh, rainfall, so we we uh, read the, uh, the daily rainfall now from uh, from a different file, uh, which is also an SDF file. So the location uh, names here are given in, in capital letters rather than small letters. So then we have to use capital letters here. 
Again, we plot the data just to see if it looks uh, reasonable, and we can see that it, it does here. So most of the uh, days uh, we get more or less than 50 um, millimeters per day, and sometimes we get these uh, spikes here with extreme rainfall. So the highest value is less than 300 millimeters for one day. And now we want to um, look at only the days when it rains, and now we, we pick that as a wet day more than uh, one degree, uh, one millimeter per day. We, we also uh, say, say that we want to now work with a pure numbers and a date object, which uh, uh, the dates sometimes get in the way of the analysis. So we, we and then we uh, want to uh, um, uh, try to describe the statistics in a, with a simple curve again, just the exponen exponential distribution, which has only one parameter, and that's the, the mean, the wet day mean, mu here. We also want to look at the wet day frequency as well, how often does it rain? So we, we basically divide the days into rainy days and non-rainy days, and when it doesn't rain, it's, there's no rainfall, so then, it's, the, the, then the mean is zero. And now we want to, uh, est uh, to make a similar histogram as before, so now we let the, um, the um, um, sets go between 1 and 300, so that's the, the steps that we want to, to show the histogram for. And then we just do the histogram for the wet days and uh, not the dry days. And you can see that here's a wet day uh, histogram. So it, it sort of looks like uh, an exponential distribution, but it's not quite. So you can see that it doesn't really fit very well um, in the lower end here. But these are not so important because we're more interested in, in the higher end here. So then we want to see, okay, how many days with more than th uh, 30 uh, millimeters? So we've got 470 here. And well, then we can also estimate that from this curve as well, and that's 424. So it's not quite the same, but it's somewhere in the ballpark. Now, the nice thing with this exponential distribution is that when you take into wet day mean as well, and then you plot uh, the number of days above 20 millimeters uh, year by year, um, then you get this curve here. So then the, the black curve is uh, the probabilities, and the red curves are the observations. It's not perfect, but it gives some indication of, uh, of uh, that you have a correlation here. Um, and that means that if you can say something about how the wet day mean changes or the wet day frequency changes, then we can get some idea above, ab about um, how the, uh, this, uh, the rainfall statistics changes as well. Thank you.